Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, more of our interesting conversations we have this morning. We've talked about so much and now we're moving to discuss agriculture and some, well, someone um, or group of people who have done, I believe, exceptionally well with uh, trying to improve on farming and agriculture across uh, Nigeria and Africa. We'd like to say good morning to Mr. Onyeka Akuma. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks a lot. Good morning. Good morning good to morning you. Let, let's quickly talk about um, what Farm Crowdy is all about. You, I believe, started it? Yes. Um, Farm Crowdy started November 2016. It's um, Nigeria's first um, digital agriculture platform. Uh, we started as a crowdfunding platform um, in 2016, connecting small-scale farmers with investors, um, um, getting money from the public, getting money from individuals, and they were able to get the farmers to do the work they need to do on the farm. And then at the end of the cycle, um, we get the farmers access to funding, technical knowledge, and then market to sell what it is they've produced from the farm. And then we pay people back their money at the end of that cycle. So that's how we started in Farm Crowdy. But um, coming into last year, we evolved beyond just crowdfunding. Now we've moved away from crowdfunding to using technology to create um, value for farmers as cuts across several other um, business ventures that we recently launched on Saturday. So how in real terms, yeah. break it down for us, okay. are you empowering, you've transcended uh, crowdfunding to using technology? Talk to us yeah. in, a little bit. So yeah. we noticed that across the value chain, um, the agricultural value chain, there are so many um, pain points for farmers and uh, people in that value chain that find it difficult interacting with technology. Um, so what we did was we, we created six different businesses out of what Farm Crowd originally was doing. One was structured finance. And so we're getting access to funding to the farmers within our network um, to touch, um, to, to access monies, whether it's from the central bank or DFIs, um, development um, financial institutions. Um, we get them monies in bulk, um, patient capital over a long period for them to cultivate and not have to worry about where they're going to get their funding from. Uh, we have um, farm crowd aggregation that provides access to markets for the farmer's produce and then helping to reduce wastage. Um, I guess you know that one over three of everything produced in the world is wasted. In, in Africa, in Nigeria precisely, almost 50% of all we produce gets wasted before it even gets to the market um, from the farmer's um, um, farm. So we're creating access for them to be able to see market prices, for them to get buyers even before they are done producing. We have farm crowding insurance that provides um, some level of cover for them. Uh, we're able to broker insurance deals for them to get crop health, life insurance for the farmers. We have um, farm crowding tech and data, which is the bedrock. And in tech and data, what we do is we get the farmer's details, whether it's biometrics, financial history, operational history, to profile the farmers in a very good way for the donors or the investors to see that we've de-risked the farmers to the barest minimum. So before you put money with a farmer, over 290,000 farmers within our network, before you put money in them, you would have already seen the profile of the farmer to know that, is this farmer going to be able to pay me back? Or is this farmer going to take this money and marry a second wife? Um, um, I, 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 wanted, I wanted to talk. I want to talk about the financial part of it now. Okay. And um, you, I think we'll have time to also talk about farm food, so because I saw I went through your Twitter, yeah. your Twitter page and I saw some testimonies there. But when an investor um, gives money to a farmer, what what is the investor expecting back? It, and of course, also talk about it from the farmer's perspective also. I have plans of going into farming. I don't have any land anywhere, but I've always wanted to grow chickens and sell eggs. Okay. Um, t talk about those two aspects quickly. Okay, I think from the first angle, from the investor's angle, every investor putting money in any project is looking at getting a return on his investment, including his capital. Now, um, starting out a farming project, um, farming is business. I'm giving you, say, 100,000 naira. And I'll expect that after you do, when you're done with the farming season, you will give me back my 100,000 naira and maybe some return on investment. But the average investor that is looking at agriculture doesn't just want to put his money that way and just get his money back. He wants to know what happened on the farm. He wants to be part of the project. Yes. He wants to get updates. And so these were the things we were providing for um, investors, individual investors, before we evolved away from the crowdfunding model. Now we're getting long-term impact investors that are ready to put their money down for, say, three years to five years. 
and then get the farmers to work and repeat their cycle over and over again. So from that part, you will find investors that are patient to see the farmers evolve, patient to see the farmers increase their income, patient to see the farmers grow their margins. On the farmer's end, if you're a farmer that is, say, sitting here in the office and you want to farm somewhere, you want to take money to do that, um, it's, I would always advise that you need to put your feet on the ground. Um, and in order to do that, you may need to spend some time on the farm. But the average farmer that is working on the farm, his own expectation is, you've gotten me the right input. You've gotten me the right technical knowledge. Now it's time for me to work and repay you with a very decent harvest. Once I do that, you sell the harvest on my behalf, because most of the farmers still need you to sell for them. Um, that's where farm crowding aggregation comes into play. That's where farm crowding foods also comes into play, because so we get the harvest from the farmers and we sell it through our e-commerce platform. Once you do that, you pay me back faster than other people will pay me, and I get happy that I'm a farmer. All right, we'll continue with details of your operations, but I want to know, this is an, an uncharted um, era for us, pandemic. Yes. Uh, it came. How has it um, affected uh, your business and coverage, and what ways have you innovated to ensure that, you know, it doesn't adversely uh, disrupt operations? So two things happened for us in Farm Crowley during the pandemic. One was, um, because we had moved away from crowdfunds, we, we had less pressure from um, raising monies and dealing with issues around payback and all. We, we started doing a lot of trading activity. And so um, Farm Crowdy got um, a license. Um, um, one of the licenses we got was to trade organic ginger to the UAE. We've traded over 6,000 bags of organic ginger to the UAE. So we were actively trading um, as against just doing core production. That was one thing that happened during the pandemic. So it allowed us to continue some of our business even while the pandemic was done, going on. The second thing that happened was we got approval from state governments to be able to move food items to some of those pick-up points that people, those um, makeshift markets that were set up for people to pick um, food items from. And because of that license, we found our staff, some of the people in Farm Crowd, struggling to get to those markets because movement was restricted. Um, we then said, okay, let's use the approvals we have to get some food items to our team members at home. That activity showed us that there were so many other people that were struggling to get food items, whether it's meat or chicken. Um, Easter came around that period. People didn't have chicken for Easter. There was no Easter turkey for most people. Okay. Um, there was issues around getting access to the market to get tomato or onions. And so what we did was we took that activity that happened in one week and created Farm Crowdy Foods. I saw that already. Yeah, so that yeah. Farm Crowdy Foods was birthed during the pandemic. And then people started using their mobile apps to um, order oh, for yeah, food yeah. items yeah, and yeah, it got delivered to on Farm Crowdy Foods. Um, it's, it's relatively cheaper. Ah! It's relatively <laughs> cheaper. I know onions is the, is the big thing right I, now. Three, I just three. Want, uh, I just why do you know, know if, is it 300 or 500? I've seen a guy with onions and security guards. <laughs> <laughs> so, so quickly, quickly talk to, you know, um, everyone who's watching about why they should get involved with uh, Farm Crowdy, what they stand to gain and um, where we're moving um, with this. Um, from a business end, um, the average businessman that is looking at setting up an agri business shop will find usefulness in farm crowding marketing. Now, with the way we've been able to build our brand, we can help other SMEs build their own brands. And so, with farm crowding marketing, there's the opportunity for businesses there. With farm crowding aggregation, there's opportunity to trade commodities, to buy the commodities at the right price. Um, but for the average customer, I think Farm Crowded Foods becomes your win, where you're able to buy food items and it gets delivered to you anywhere in Lagos. I mean, we're starting out with Lagos, but we're going to extend that into um, other cities um, in the country. And so you can now download the Farm Crowded Food app on the Android or Google Play Store. Um, you just type Farm Crowded Foods and you get that app. And then you're able to now order for food items and it gets delivered to you anywhere in Lagos. So I think that is a huge advantage for 
the B2C customer that is coming on Fan Club. Are you going to expand to other parts? We're out of time. You yes, mentioned we, Lagos. Yes, we have intentions to start out our operations again um, in, in cities like Abuja and cities like Port Harcourt. Very busy cities where you have a lot of... Um, uh, and then gradually go to out. other parts that are not oh. that busy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much Thank for coming on much. The Breakfast this morning. Thanks a lot. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.